Ladies and gentlemen, Neil Armstrong, the first to plant his foot on the surface of the moon, has been a pioneer in many ways. And Mr. Armstrong, in asking you to come to the podium, may I say that millions of Americans have admired you not only for your achievement, but for the quiet dignity with which you have conducted yourself and represented not only our country, but humankind. Ladies and gentlemen, Neil Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, Mr. President, members of Congress, fellow astronauts, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Wilbur Wright once noted that the only bird that could talk was the parrot, and he didn't fly very well. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll be brief. <laughs> this, this week, uh, America has been recalling the Apollo program and reliving uh, the memories of those times in which so many of us here, the colleagues here in the first rows, were immersed. Our old astrogeology mentor, Gene Schumacher even called in one of his comments to mark the occasion with spectacular Jovian fireworks. And reminding us once again of the power and consequence of celestial extracurricular activities. Many Americans were part of Apollo, about one or two in each thousand citizens all across the country. They were asked by their country to do the impossible, to envisage, to design, and to build a method of breaking the bonds of Earth's gravity, and then sally forth and visit another heavenly body. The principal elements leaving Earth, navigating in space, and descending to a planet unencumbered with runways and traffic controls would include the major requirements necessary for a spacefaring people. Today, a space shuttle flies overhead with an international crew. A number of countries have international space programs. During the space age, we have increased the knowledge of our universe a thousandfold. Today we have with us uh, a group of students among America's best. To you we say we have only completed a beginning. We leave you much that is undone. There are great ideas undiscovered, breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. There are places to go beyond belief. Those challenges are yours. In many fields, not the least of which is space, because there lies human destiny.
Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Just a day before he died, President Kennedy compared our space program to a boy who comes upon a wall in an orchard. The wall is tall. It looks insurmountable. But the boy is curious about what lies on the other side. So he throws his cap over the wall. And then he has no choice but to go after it. Well, 25 years ago today, our nation, represented by these three brave men, made that climb. And so today, we are gathered to celebrate their voyage. And I honestly hope to recommit ourselves to their spirit of discovery. Apollo 11, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins were our guides to the wondrous, the unimaginable at that time, the true handiwork of God. They realized the dreams of a nation. They fulfilled an American destiny. They taught us that nothing is impossible if we set our sights high enough. Today, we're honored to have them and all the other Apollo astronauts who are here with us. For every American who followed your journey, especially for those of us who were young on that fateful day 25 years ago, and for the young Americans who still dream dreams of a future in space, we thank you all. Looking back on that mission, one thing is clear that we ought to remember today. It wasn't easy. The ship to the heavens measured just 13 feet in diameter. The destination was three days and a world away. On the third day, as the tiny module descended to the moon, it came dangerously close to a crash landing. That happens around here all the time. <laughs> but Neil Armstrong took over the controls from the computer and landed safely. Man had not been rendered obsolete by the mechanical, and that hasn't happened yet. Not long after that, when he stepped on the moon, Mr. Armstrong marked the outer limit of the human experiment with those simple words, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. These men and the other astronauts who came before and after have helped us to step into another world right here on Earth. They've shown us that we can harness the technology of space in areas from the economy to the environment to education to information and technology. The products and knowledge that grew out of our space missions has changed our way of life forever and for the better. And in our quest, we have relearned a sense of confidence that has always been an essential ingredient of our American dream. Today, that journey continues. Our commitment to the space program is strong and unwavering. The best way to honor these men and all the others who have helped us so much